All right, hello everyone. This is Wiz, and as you can see by the title, this is going to have six tutorials in it. I told you to read the description. Just check that out. So when it comes to patching any FFT hack, you want to get a couple tools. Well, one tool in particular, and it's going to be on the downloads page I just clicked on. Okay, you're going to need PPF Omatic. Okay. PSX, this is the PC version right here. This is for Macintoshes. Um, it'll be in a DMG file. Uh, a lot of people in the previous video I did for this for patching, a lot of people then a lot of people expressed their concerns and like, oh, I'm having trouble patching, like it won't work and all that. The only thing I can suggest to you is to read uh, is to download the PPF again, the the one that you actually use to patch the game or just download the application once again and for in particular for Mac users if you're having trouble using the DMG file I suggest the same thing or oh, and if that still doesn't work I'd advise you to try and download Wine32 basically what it is is it's a program that allows you to run a virtual PC I guess you could say it basically runs an emulator that acts like as if it's a PC and then you could just download the PC version of PPL Flamatic and patch that way. Um, if your Mac sucks and you can't do it, I got all I can say is you're kind of out of luck then. Anyway, so besides PPL Flamatic, the tool that's going to overwrite Final Fantasy Tactics, you're also going to want to go to the forum. And in the forum, you're probably wondering where do I get all the patches. You're just going to have to go in whatever section. And in this case, I'm just going to go to Call of Power. And when it comes to Call of Power in this Chapter 2 thread, this is where you can download it, I think. Yep, right here. Uh, I already have the file, so you just download the PPF. In this case, it's in a uh, WinRAR file. You could just extract it via WinRAR. So right here, it's in WinRAR. You could just do right-click extract here. Voila, this is the PPF. Since we have our two pieces, I already downloaded uh, ppf matic So what you're not going to need is your ISO, which is your file, the file of the game. And I'm just going to wait for it. I'm just making a copy right now with this exact same name, Final Fantasy Tactics PSX NTSC hyphen U dot RAR. Okay, so it's done. It's right here. Now we're going to go back and patch our game. So ppf matic we're going to click, wait for it to open up. It's going to ask for your ISO file. The ISO file is the actual game itself. An image and by, uh, bin files, those are the, all the exact same thing. So you don't have to worry about that too much. This is the file we just uh, made a copy of. 560 megabytes. The patch itself is the .ppf file. So we're going to go back and this is our patch and then we're just gonna push apply and this is a relatively large patch so it'll take a little bit longer for me like it might take you know a minute or two normally like with regular patches it's instantaneous so yeah I got that done and here's some confirmation that I patched it I'm just gonna run my ISO I didn't change the name of it it's right here Ah, oh, shit that's fine uh, you can see that the title screen's changed with the word patch on it. I forgot to add in uh Ah, uh, never mind, that's fine. I forgot to change the settings to make this speed up a little. And... Oh, shit, I'm using my controller. Okay, well... Yeah, I mean, I showed you that title screen. It was changed from the original, so that's how you know it was patched. Um... There really isn't much else to it. I mean, if it, you get errors or something, I mentioned it before, but just download the application again, and you should be fine. So, yep, with that being said, I'll see you guys later. Hello, everyone. So, we're going to begin this very first tutorial, and it's a very basic one on how to add in additional palettes or sprites, whatever you want to call them, into your uh, video game, Final Fantasy Tactics. So I have these first six slots assigned. We're just gonna I'm just gonna show you how to add into slots seven and eight, which isn't really that bad of a process. So I'm just gonna keep this open for the meantime. I think this is a Shishi 
Sprite Manager version uh, 0.478. You can download on NFFHactics.com. Uh, before we even begin the video, I just wanted to give you one note. Since this, is ver since this is the very first tutorial, the way in which I'm doing it, it's a little bit out of order in terms of recording, but that's not going to matter for you guys because I'll be editing it and all that shit. I advise you to keep your captions on because I think I sent one of the tutorials that I was going to keep it on for you to go click on it to download a link. Don't worry, I'm not going to be throwing any other regular... Uh, weird ass anim annotations, whatever the fuck they're called. Yeah, they're the annotations. Sorry. So just keep those on if you could. Anyways, all right. So just keep Shishi. Uh, once you download the program, restructure your ISO. In other words, make room for it so that you can add sprites in. Uh, after you do that, I'm just gonna keep my program pro closed for the uh, open for the meantime. All right. You're also gonna want to download Graphic Scale Free Edition. You can just simply Google that. It shouldn't be that bad. Uh, if it doesn't work for you for whatever reason, I advise you to re-download it. And if it doesn't work, just keep on doing it again and again. And if there is no uh, end in sight of you ever being able to download it, I just got to say you're a little bit out of luck. So um, if this doesn't work for you, Mac users, I kind of meant, oh, yeah, I do mention in one of my other tutorials, but I advise the same thing and download the Wine32 uh, what's it called? The virtual PC. It basically allows you to run Windows programs in a virtual-esque ma manner so anyways uh yeah so i have my file right here open it's in a dot bmp what i'm going to be doing i was i'm going to just going to go to oh actually to get this little window it's called palette open you're just going to do view and then highlight palette so this is what it is they represent each shade within every sprite and i'll go into more detail as to which uh which color like how can you tell which uh colors assigned to which sprite all right so the thing you're going to want to keep in mind is that these first eight rows, so one, uh, I'll, hi I'll highlight them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are for your sprites, all right? So keep that in mind. These last eight rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, those are for your portraits, all right? You got to keep those, uh, keep a distinction. I guess one way to easily tell the difference between the two is that the very first um, block the very first block uh, is always going to be black for palette. So just want to keep tell you that. Tell you that, guys. Tell you guys that. Sorry, Jesus, my mouth. Anyways, now here's the thing. When you edit, you can only edit either palettes or portraits. The reason why is when it comes to portraits, you're going to have to keep this box checked. When it comes to palettes, you're going to have to keep it unchecked. So you have to do one or the other. There's no in between. Otherwise, the colors will be completely messed up. All right. So for this is Sprite 1, Sprite 2, Sprite 3, Sprite 4. And then you can tell these are Sprites 7, Sprite A. All I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold. Click that entire uh, row. Highlight the entire row. I'm going to paste it over here. I'm not holding the mouse or anything. I just clicked it. All right. So I pasted it. I'm going to push OK. After that, I'm going to load the palette in. I'm going to go do the exact same thing, except I'm going to keep this checked for portraits. And then I'm just going to do this, push OK. Now I'm just going to save to make a really relatively quick process. This is the third retake, by the way. I don't know. I was using Camp Studio to record and it was fucking me up. Weird ass glitches nonstop. Hopefully there's none this time. I'm using Camtasia. So I'm going to type it in, mail apprentice, here it is, this file. You guys probably saw, but for Sprite 7, we put in red palettes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there really isn't much more to it. I mean, that's the exact process of how to go about adding in additional colors. So yeah, this tutorial is over, and I'm going to go into more detail on how you can add in sprites to your formation. Uh, yeah, your formation and pre-battle screens. Yep, we're going to get right to that now. All right, hello everyone. So we're gonna begin this uh, tutorial now for adding information sprites as well as pre-battle sprites, as in that little screen right before you get into the battle. Yeah. So uh, one tool that you're gonna need to down. Actually, I say uh, a couple things. So fxx.com I already showed you that. I think you go to miscellaneous for the downloads. Uh, if you type in FFT Patcher Suite, the most recent version, don't download the source one. Actually, I don't think it makes a difference, but I don't download it. But anyways. Uh, yeah, it includes FFT Patcher, Shishi Sprite Editor, same thing as the manager that I showed you before. Um, and then, yeah, 
I might show you in one of the other tutorials, but CD Mage, I advise you to get that as well as CD Prog because if your ISO, if you if you uh, customize it such that like there's so much data that it's normally it, it's different than uh, the size should be. Like basically, when you download CD Mage, sometimes depending on the size of the ISO, it might not be compatible. So you can just use CD Prog as an alternative. So after you download those two, um, open up CD Prog. And you're going to want to uh, open up your ISO, your file, uh, for the patching tutorial I showed you. Uh, yeah, so you're going to be doing that. I'm going to be opening up a particular ISO. And the reason why we're doing all this is because we have to extract two files. And I, I, there's, an, there's another program i got to show you guys that we need to download as well. All right. So I'll show you the other program that you're going to need to download. Uh, it should be, where is it? Sorry, I just have, I'm taking a look. It's right here. FFT EVGRP, you want to download that as well. So go ahead and do so. Uh, let's see. After you do that, open up CD Mage. Go to track one. You're going to go to, the, you're going to click on this event folder. Uh, the, the layout for CD Prog is slightly different, but not such so much that you can't tell what's what. Uh, you're going to extract two files. You're going to extract the unit.bin. I'm going to put it on my desktop. That will be the easiest to find. And then extract it uh, it just makes a copy and sends it over there and then the wildface.bin you're going to need to extract those two files so we're doing that right now uh, extract now after you extract those two files you can well i'm going to leave this open for the meantime you can close it if you wish you're just going to have to open open it up anyways after you download fft evgrp uh, open up the program mine is right here and it's going to ask you for those designated files so yeah um let's see i need to figure out uh all right yeah desktop i put those on desktop unit.bin there's that unit.bin here's the wild face and then you just click on wild face and it should be right here this one represents portraits this rep this one represents the sprite it's a uh, front angle uh, let's see. I'm going to look for the monk. All right. I'm just looking for the male monk. There he is. And then there's also I'm gonna look for the monk on this one too. Should be here pretty soon. Yeah. All right. So what you're going to do from here is depending on which, uh, sprite, depending on which portrait and which sprite you want to place on the formation, I'm going to be using the monk, for example. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to save it as a BMP. It's going to save this as a as a bmp in the exact same process with the wild face so after you save and put them in a directory where you can find them easily you're going to go back to graphic scale you're going to open up those files uh ju just for the sake of it i'm going to uh do the save as just to make it a little bit easier on you guys uh where is it right here yeah so save bmp i'm going to go to desktop just to make this shit easy uh, i'm just going to say m monk for male monk uh, male monk uh, palette. That's what I'm going to do. TTE. Uh, and then just save it. It's a save as function as I've stated already. And then may M monk portrait. Because that's what it is. Okay. So after you get done saving those files, uh, you're going to open them up in graphic scale. And it's, mine should be like M whatever. So um yeah so palette and they're also going to do portrait so sorry my control o control o control open and then portrait all right so i got the two files open this is a 32 by 48 and i think this is a 24 by 40 this little uh, sprite right here i haven't done i haven't done uh done any of this editing in a while but i remember it for the most part 24 by 40 yep okay so you're probably going to see where this is going. You're going to be switching out the colors. Um, this time I'm going to, I'm going to replace, hmm, let me, let me uh, zoom in 400%. Uh, there we go. I'm going to zoom in 400% on this too, just to blow up the picture. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to replace this uh, monk with another custom monk and you might have seen him already, but I'm not sure. You might not know if it's existence. Let's see. It's been out for a while, but so I'm going to go here. Let's see. It's in my directory. Let's see. It's uh, a male. What? 
Should be here somewhere. Pugilist, where are you? All right, so pallet. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna go to pallet. Actually, no. You know what? Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we'll we'll just do this simply. All right, all right. This should be fine. So we're gonna be replacing this with this, and we're gonna zoom in four hundred percent. You're gonna pick the exact same frame. So in this case, uh, you're gonna do a 24 by 40 window. It doesn't matter which pixels you capture, just as long as you capture all of them. And you can see right down in this corner, this is a 21 by 42, so I'm gonna have to customize it just a little bit. It's not It's not too bad, it's, it's a little bit pinpoint, but let's see, 20, what is it, 20 by four. So I can go two pixels this way, there we go, 24 by 40. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do Control C, highlight this, Control A, Control V. You can see that the colors are mixed up. That's because you act, you have to actually assign this to the designated palette. So in order to make this look like this, this blue, you know, I'm gonna have to assign it that blue palette. So we're just gonna do the exact same process as before with, with adding palettes. So this time it's just gonna be Pugilist. And we're gonna pick it and we're gonna replace all of those colors. And since this is a palette, keep that unchecked and paste it over the data push okay oh shit you know what hold on i remember you can't you have to actually you have to uh let's see if i can remember this correct oh that's right all right so when it comes to loading the palette you have to load the palette in first so you have to actually load in all the colors first then paste over so before you edit this you want to add in the colors these are all the colors as i've stated before you push OK. All the colors are listed there. All I have to do now is do Control Copy, Control All to highlight everything, and Control Paste. Voila. That's all it takes to represent that. So I'm just going to save it for consistency's sake. I'm going to push uh, Save, and then the portrait is a little bit different. You're going to actually, you're going to actually have to. Uh, I guess you're right. You do have to close out a CD image if you want to do it. Actually, uh, do I have to? No, I don't have to. Um, the only time you're going to have to like close out CD mage is like, because this is running, uh, let's see. Yeah. This is running FFT vanilla. If you're running the exact same ISO, you have to, you can, you can only use the one ISO in one program at a time. I'm going to be using a different ISO. So yeah. All right. I'm going to go in order to get this portrait down. You're going to have to do what I'm doing right now. You're going to have to open up Shishi sprite manager. Uh, I already have all mine loaded in. I'm going to go to mail monk. All right, he, he, the reason why you, for the most part, have to, the, the, the reason, yeah, shit, hold on. Let's see if I got everything correctly. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna have to, oh, shoot, Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's, that's fine. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do from here on out is, wait, let me see something. Something is really funky here. I gotta, Double oh, I'm zooming at 400%. Let's go to 100. Oh, what the hell? That's weird. Okay, let's see if I can just let's see if I can do this correctly again. I'm gonna close out of here. Open it up. Sorry, there's something that's really weird going on. Okay, let me open up another one. All right, I, I don't I don't know why, but like for the most part, when you look at the portrait down here where I'm where I'm highlighting. Mo I don't know why this one is normal. It's not. It's supposed to look like this, but as long as the file isn't affected, I'm fine. But as, uh, just assuming that this was affected, because 99% of the time your portrait's gonna look fucked up like this, you won't be able to like copy paste it in the here. So what you're really gonna have to do, I'm just gonna show you what you're supposed to be doing. So pretend that this fucked up portrait. Pretend that this portrait's fucked up. Okay, assuming that was fucked up, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to do on your comp keyboard just stop. Uh, push the print screen button. Uh, if you're a Mac user, I think there's a program that allows you to do the exact same thing, print the entire screen. So I just push that button. I'm gonna open up uh, a new thing. I'm gonna put like 700, whatever the dimensions, 800, 700 by 800. I'm gonna copy paste everything I just printed. And what you would do from this point is zoom in 400%. And you basically do the exact same thing as before, assuming that it wasn't messed, assuming that it was messed up. So 
and this is a uh it's gonna say 48 by 32 and uh i'll show you where it says it'll say it soon yeah see 48 by 32 you're gonna rotate it to the left 90 degrees so it's standing upright you just do control copy i've said it before but you're gonna want to change this uh this regular portrait you're gonna have to change it to this color right here so you're gonna go load load palette import file mail pugilist and then we're gonna have this check for palettes uh select all this you're gonna push okay colors are loaded in you're gonna go back here you're gonna copy since the colors are loaded in properly you're gonna control a control v okay so now that you got these two files edited accordingly all what you need to do from this point is go back to FFT EGRP, which I'm doing right now. So open up the unit that bin. We're going to open up the vanilla and uh, unit and wild face. So we're doing that right now. And after you do that, you're going to go back to the ones that you saved, you edited, whatever, and replace them with import. Let me show you. So this is Ninja Monk is all the way up here. All right. So there's the male monk for the portrait. And then here is the unit that bin. It should be up a little. All you're gonna do is import uh, the BMP, and the ones that we edited, we're just gonna replace them. So don't worry about this little uh, exclamation point with the circle in it. Uh, exclamation point inside the little blue circle. All right, you're gonna do the exact same thing, and you're just gonna import this uh, the this uh, palette. Okay, this uh, monk yeah uh let me see something yeah it's the portrait sorry uh after that you're just going to push uh save file uh i think you have to do a save i think you have to do that i'm just going to name it this and put it on the desktop so it should be fine uh okay after you get uh oh i didn't save this as well i gotta save this there we go so now the monk has been changed and all you do now is you import that those those same files that you extracted you just import them back into cd mage so since i have this open all i have to really do from this point is go to let's see while uh, unit.bin is right here you import file if you're going to do cd prog it'll be like insert file into it does the exact same thing in essence uh let's see this way, I'm just double checking. This is the unit that bin. Yep. So, I'm going to scroll down a little, click on it, file imported successfully, and then do the exact same process. Now, you don't have to do this for each one at a time. I mean, you could edit your unit that bin to your heart's galore. You can get the whole damn thing done, then imported. You could put in five, six other sprites, but you have to do one at a time in terms of saving importing them all that shit it'll take a, it'll take a while but you know for me i'm so used to it doesn't take that long at all even when i'm talking to you guys that's fine though i'm showing it for your own good uh for your own good all right so now that these files are all imported uh this is your uh fft leveling up and music disabled i think this is what is it sprinkles let me let me see i, I named them to keep the yeah, impossibly sprinkles okay that's good so now I can close out all this bullshit now that we're good. And you know what? Just actually for the sake of it, um, I don't know if there's going to be an error, but I'm going to have to open up another ISO. Because what I want to do is, uh, let's see, I'm going to open up. What, what I didn't do is for the male monk, I didn't load the battle sprite in just for consistency. So here's uh, sprinkles right here. I'm going to load in the male monk that uh, I used earlier. So, male monk is right here, and uh, yeah, that's right. I remember this one. I edited it. Uh, import uh, BMP. Let's see. That would be under where? That'd be under desktop. Let's see. It's a, it's a good idea to find a place where you can find all the shit easily. So, let's see generic sprites, male pugilist. Let's see. Should be here. Let's see. Huge list. Oh. Open up. So, yeah. Now I'm going to show you some confirmation that this uh, worked in the formation screen and pre-battle screen. All right. Let me open up. Uh, let me open up FFT and we'll get right to it. 
Damn it, sorry. FFT tools and stuff. What the fuck? Where am I? Oh, oh, here. Okay, there we go. Let me see something. I need to check. Yep, I have my memory. All right, that's good. All right, now we're going to use that one that we edited. It was called Sprinkles, the ISO. It should be coming up relatively soon right here. All right. So we're, you're going to get some uh, proof right now. Actually, uh, yeah, you're going to get in some proof very momentar momentarily. It's all works. So, yeah, I showed you how to import and all that shit. You want some proof? Well, see, as you can see, um, he's on our formation screen now. If you check the job wheel, uh, the monk right here has been replaced. I mean, you can see that. So that's how you go about doing it for uh, the formation screen and give you proof that works with the pre-battle screen. I'll just load up uh, this one right here. So this is the pre-battle screen. See, everything works. And the reason why I had to go into Shishi and then import it for uh, whatever, like the reason why I just had to put it in under two minutes ago for Shishi is because that, I mean, if you load it in the Shishi that way, it'll work for the in-game. It just won't work for this pre-battle screen and everything. That's all. So what I'm trying to get at is that everything that I just showed you is irrelevant when it comes to the battle screen. If you want to do it on the formation screen job wheel, you have to do it, uh, do what I just did. But there you go. I mean, there's proof that how that you can uh, get everything. Uh, but there's proof. Yeah. So I hope you found this tutorial also to be very helpful. I'll see you guys uh, for the next tutorial, whatever the hell that is. Yep. Ciao. All right, everyone. So before we begin this tutorial, all I'm going to say is this is this is actually going to be more of an addendum than anything. Because I already made a tutorial for this and it was in full screen and all that jazzy shit. So all I'm going to say is read the description once again. I'll link you to that hex editing tutorial. Take a look at that uh, and then we'll come back. All right. So assuming that you just ignore what it is I said you're going to continue on, assuming that you read the tutorial already, one... It isn't necessarily a complaint, but one thing that was pointed out was, okay, so if I'm going to get like one line or like I'm going to get one little thing of text, do I really have to type all the shit out? No, you don't. You can copy paste it, but the way in which you do copy paste it is a little bit different because I already copied this. I already did control C, but when you go to edit and you want to go paste, you do not want to do your normal control V paste insert. You want to do paste right. The reason why I say yeah, this is because well, I'm going to give you an analogy why, okay? So let's say this battle.bin is a fucking cheeseburger, right? All this, all these numbers represent the ingredients, okay? And what you want to be doing is you want to be taking out some ingredients. You want to be taking out like pickles and you want to add in onions. When you insert the onions, you're adding on top. You're adding the onions on top of the pickles. What you want to do is take the pickles out and then put those motherfucking onions back in. Okay? So instead of using control V, you want to use control B like in boobs. Okay? There. It'll help you remember the cheeseburger analogy too, I hope. So I'm going to push control B now. See, all that is already written for me. So that's all it really comes down to. That's all I really wanted to add. And I'm going to show you confirmation too that this... Uh, global character evasion hack works too, but before we do I'm gonna do for the hell of it because I don't know with Camtasia. It's a little bit buggy, but I can't really like highlight anything. I can't tell if I am so Oops, let's see zero zero one one e seven zero eight This is the next offset two three four one Zero five. Whoa, you cocksucker. I don't want to go back. Okay zero five zero eight and then it's just eight more zeros, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And all I gotta do is just save the bad motherfucker. We're gonna save. And we'll do the exact same process as before. And let's see. I'm gonna close this out just for a moment. And we're gonna open up another ISO. Let's see. Control open. Let's see. Is this the one? Yes, it is. All right, so, yeah, we're going to open it all up, and we're going to import, as usual. Nothing too exciting here. 
Let's see, where are you? Oh man, I got a lot of shit to organize. Okay, here we go. We're gonna exit. Now we're gonna go do EPSXE, and I'll show you what the global character evasion hack does for you. Let's see. Yeah, there's the one uber sexy tut. <laughs> yeah, anyways. We're gonna continue right now, and let me just open this up. Uh, check the memory card. Do that. And now I'll don't even ask what all this shit is. I'll get to that soon. So, let's see here. Uh, how you doing? Okay, whatever. I'll show you the global character evasion hack any second. What that hack does. So, let's see if I can just get this little cunt out of the way. Let's go fight. I'll throw a broadsword. Oh, only 48 damage. Oh, fuck you. You got to catch, you little cunt. Oh, what the? I'm going to throw a fireball at your ass just for the heck of it. Oh, I can't because the angle. It's too shitty of an angle. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I'll throw it. All right. So, all right, here's what the character... Uh, yeah, let me move the time age over. So, if you want confirmation as to whether or not the global character vision hack is working or not... All right, so as you can see on the sides, the only thing that would be accounted for are uh, mantles and shields. Normally, I'm only supposed to have a 60% chance of hitting this person, but as you can see here, I have a 55%. That's how you can tell that the global character evasion hack is being incorporated. I don't know why, but it should be like 53%, because if you take half of this Lancer's character evasion, 15%, that's 7.5. Half of 15 is 7.5. So, and because the game rounds down, it should actually be 7%. So it should be basically, it should basically be a 47% chance of him dodging, or in other words, a 53% chance. I don't know why. I think this hack might be a little bit outdated. Uh, but this is generally how you go about doing hacks. Copy, paste, and voila. There's some confirmation that the hack works. Let's see if I can hit him with my tampon. Oh, Staff Whack. Okay, whatever. So there you go. Um, well, we'll be moving on to the next tutorial, whatever the hell that is. Yep. Alright, hello everyone. So this is going to be a tutorial on how to use, or how to set up a player versus player match, you know, using the world debug code. So this is the fifth tutorial, second to last one. Uh, I advise you to turn the annotations on because... Uh, the captions, whatever the hell they are, the annotations, because I'm going to link right now to another video. And as, if you click on it, that'll actually show you how to use the memory card generator. All right. So once you make your memory card, uh, you just want to load it into your memory card slot. After you do that, you want to go download an application called uh, PEC and then download that off of Google. It's like the most recent version, something like that. Uh, you want to actually get the application. So yeah, we want to do that. It's highly advisable. You want to go to your user database. This is the actual code you insert right here. Uh, world debug menu hyphen FFT. That's why I called it. So yeah, I'm just going to push OK. I'm going to go click this. This is the actual code. So if you want to like write it down or something cool, if not, oh well. Uh, you just go push OK to highlight it. Uh, I don't want to save the changes. It's send your cheats to plugin. Uh, now it's going to ask you for your plugin from EPSXE. In this case, you go to config video, and I already selected PSX Emulation Cheater 2.5. When you configure it, you're just going to want to select your actual one. So I already did that. As you can see, it says. Uh, transferring data, it's gonna it's gonna run it up. So I'm gonna run the ISO, and then we're gonna get that little thing in the corner where it says PSX Emulation Cheater. And uh, yeah, I already loaded that memory previous memory card from the last tutorial. And this is how I did my player versus player match with Baron, uh, my YouTube channel. So all this text. Uh, I'll, uh, shit, you know, I'm going to probably just uh, show you 
I'm going to do, do another part of this tutorial. I'll just do a, real, a really quick cut. And I'll show you how to get th uh, this text all fixed up. So, oops, did I pick the wrong map or what? Oh, shit, no, no. You want to select this option. All right, yep. But when you enter EPSXE emulation, you click on this. This little thing will pop up. The number represents what map it's going to be. Uh, I think like number map 17, that's Underground Liberia Castle. Go on ffhackdex.com, check the map section. You'll be able to figure out which one is what. And then place your units. And then, yeah. I mean, this is basically how I did it with Baron. There really isn't much to it. Um, oh, wait. Hold on a sec. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to say one thing about this. The thing I don't like about doing player versus player matches, not that it's a major issue right now, but because the game reads this as regular and like actual enemies and actual players, like FFT, the enemies, despite you know being in a different order, they're always going to get the, their turns in first if they have the exact same amount of speed. Uh, so yeah, I mean. That's why she's able to get her turn in first, even though you got a 10 speed. Oh, wait, hold on, really? Oh, we got this ninja right here, this 12 speed ninja. So yeah, there you go. That's how you get the world debug code to work out. Yep. All right, so this is the sixth tutorial and the title of it, as you already know or should know, is editing the memory card generator, which will allow you to make like teams such as for FFT Arena 1.3, all that. Basically, you can make your own custom generator. Um, you actually need the generator um, just from FFT Arena or the 1.3 tournament hacks or whatever, but I'm going to show you how to edit it. So. All right, before you even begin editing with your hex editor and all that, the the file in which you want to use, like right now I have parted ways open, so I want to make a memory card generator that coincides with parted ways. So you're going to want to extract the SCUS underline 942.21 file for parted ways. I named it that. I already did the thing. I already extracted it. It's right here. I'm not going to change the name. All right, so what you're going to need to do then is after you download a memory card generator from either FFT Arena or the 1.3 ones, as I've mentioned, sorry for the repetitiveness, what you're going to do is you're going to go to this new extract tab once you open it up. And I got to mention one thing. You might not like get all this info. All I say is you want to ena enable macros when you open up this memory card generator and also uh, I'll put it in the description, but there's also a memory card generator. Uh, I think, uh, no, no, yeah, you're also, you might need this. Actually, yeah, for this memory card generator, if you have like an old version, you might need to download the analyst tool pack. So I'll put a link in the description as well saying what that is. Okay, so to get to the actual editing, all right. So as you can see right here, this is the actual byte length of the file. So that's how long the actual string of code is, 4,096, I guess, numbers or whatever. Um, all right, so right down here, these numbers, as you can see, I'll put, uh, you know what, I might even put this uh, memory card generator in the description as well. These numbers from left to right, so this first column, these represent the offsets that you start at. What you want to do is you basically want to copy all the data from this offset that, are hi that I've highlighted all the way to that offset. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So what I'm going to do right now is just uh, use my SCUS file. I think it's right here. Yep. So we got the SCUS open. We're going to go to that offset 4F3F0. If I can get there, there we go, 4F3F0. And what you're going to do from here is just highlight. You can just simply highlight all the way to, to get all the way down. And it's going to show you 4F3F0 hyphen 4F544. That's the one we're ending at. But we're going to go all the way down the 503EF. All right, so that's not me for a little bit. 
EF five zero okay. Five zero three EF. It's more copy pasting essentially. Five zero B C D E oh here we go. Five zero three E four six seven eight nine ten eleven ah to see this is all what it is. Uh five zero three E F. All what you're gonna do now is just push control C copy. And before I even do anything, I'm going to make a copy of this vanilla memory card generator. So I'm just going to... Oh shit, wait, hold on. Yep, so I made a copy right here. I'm going to do a copy now. And I'm going to open up this memory card generator. Uh, I, hold on a sec, I, I got to close one of them out. Uh, yeah, I'm going to close this one out. And now I'm going to go to the copy and I'm going to move all the way to that extract file and I'm going to scroll up. You want to, when you paste the data and you want to go from top to bottom. Oh shit. I almost forgot one step. You, you can't actually paste it the way in which it's already like that. Um, because here's what's going to happen. See all those spaces. Well, that's what's going to happen if you, if you try to type it in like that, you see all these spaces right here? It's not supposed to be like that. Like the byte length is different now. You don't want that to happen. So in order to remedy your problems, you're gonna get you need to, you're gonna need to get notepad, copy paste everything, do control H. It's the same thing as uh it should be here. It's uh yeah, replace. You wanna just put a space with find what, and then you wanna do replace all. So it takes out all the spaces. And then you want to do control A for, to select all, control C to copy. Then you paste all that data in and it changed as you saw some of the numbers change. And you basically do this exact same process for abilities to items or jobs, items, skill sets, job level stats. And when it comes to, where is it? I had it. Yeah, here it is. Celdia actually listed all the offsets right here. So this is the one you start at. They coincide. So this one that's 4F, 3F, 0. This deals with abilities 1. 5, 0, 3F, 0. This deals with abilities 2. 5, 1, 8, B, 8. That deals with jobs. 5, 3, 6, B, 8. That deals with items. 5, 5, 2, 9, 4. That deals with skill sets. 5, 6, 8, C, 4. That deals with job levels. 4F10C that deals with stats. That's all what this really is. You do this process five more times. One, two, three, four, four, or oh, six more times. Sorry, I wasn't doing the math right. So right now I'm just gonna cut to a finished spreadsheet. Um, I have to mention one thing though before I do. All of this text right here, if you can see like right now, this is a uh, CCP. It shows white wind right here. You're going to have to basically type in manually. You're going to have to type in all of the all of the ability names because I mean, you can see right here it gives out a JP cost and everything. That's affected by all the code that you typed in here. So, when it lists right here like aura 50, this might be like cure 3 or something. So, you're just going to type in aura then, you know? Because let me give you an example. When you look at the vanilla memory card generator and you go on that exact same thing text see this is supposed to be the cure spell basically what this is right here is this is like all the ability slots like within fft patch or how the game reads it so yeah once you get done typing in all the code or whatever you're gonna have to do all the text yourself i'll be back probably in 15 20 minutes and i'll show you a finished product for parted ways Hold on one second. All right, everyone. So this is the second part of the sixth tutorial, just to be clear. Now, for the second part, when it comes to the text, uh, there's a couple steps that you're going to need to take. It's not like a simple one, two, three, but it is a much needed shortcut as, a, as opposed to uh, typing in everything, as in having to go here, type in manually with your bare fingers, every single ability. So as I mentioned earlier, this is part of ways. Yeah, we're a few days into the future. My lazy ass decided not to do it until now. Okay, so 
what you're going to need to do is when you download, I'm going to put it in the description uh, for Mega Upload FFT Patcher. Uh, when you download it, it's going to be in a RAR package, uh, a .rar. Um, just get Win WinRAR or 7z zip or whatever to extract the files. You know, right click and then extract here, voila, whatever. Um, when you get FFT Patcher, these are all the contents for version 0.457 that I have, and I'm going to I'm going to share with you guys. Um, when it comes to uh, you're you're going to need FFT tag text, and when you open up the file. You're going to go to your ISO, whatever it may be, and you're just going to select the designated ISO. If, if the ISO you have can't be opened up, like let's say you pick one of these ISOs and it just refuses to open up the file, then you're kind of out of luck. I really can't tell you anything else. Uh, oh, you know what? Um, hold on one second. That just said it was being used in another process, which it is. It's in CD Mage, uh, Parted Ways ISO, that is. So I just clicked out of there parted ways oh it's still being used i don't know when what oh well i'm acting like a dumbass it's still being used here okay there we go so now we'll try it yep so parted ways is opening up what you're going to do after you open it up is you're going to go to file save.fft text it's a save as function put it on your desktop probably the easiest place you can find it I, I name mine parted ways dot FFT text. Um, so after that, you're just going to bring up a notepad like we did with uh, the code earlier with SCUS or whatever, all that bullshit. Uh, you're going to just drag this in and you're going to need to do a few things with the replace function. You're going to replace uh, three entries specifically. Well, one is in these brackets. It's called entry try. And you're going to replace it with nothing. So it's basically all of those are going to get rid of. And then you're also going to have to get rid of slash entry. This one. And then there's another one. I don't know what it's about. Like, I don't know how it's denoted. And then you're going to get rid of that last one where there's a space and then a slash. Now, the reason why you're doing all this is because when... Like, all right. Let me just say this. Okay. There, in... Uh, FF and uh, memory card generator all the way over here in the text there are four columns essentially that are crucial this one represents all the abilities in the game it goes way way ways down all the abilities okay in a specific order too this one re represents all the job classes this one represents all of the item names items yep and then this one represents from arms keeper all the skill set names now we're gonna just do ability names first, and uh, it's, oh, shit. Sorry, I didn't try to do that. I'm just gonna open up right here, and we're gonna replace all this. Be the, the, those three things I'm basically getting rid of. They're in between each ability. All that bolt, all the those three things are text, and there's no way you can really essentially copy it. We're gonna do ability names. We're gonna go there. A B I L I T Y. N A M E S. I'm not a slow typer. I'm typing with one hand. So, oh no. Oh, damn it. I forgot the N. Okay, that's fine. So, now we got down to ability names. All that text we had earlier is out of the way now. And uh, as you can see, I mean, oh, didn't get rid of it. That's fine. Because, uh, you know, no, no, we have to get rid of it because see, like, it's right here blockading everything. We got to. I thought I, ha I thought I got rid of it. I swear I thought I did. Right, hold on one second. Oh, I, I might have pushed like uh, replace and not replace all. That's fine. So now we should have uh, gotten that done with. Hold on one sec. Uh, ability names, son of a bitch. Okay, now all this text was replaced. So, you know, you could just simply go scroll all the way down until you get all the abilities. It's going to take a little bit of time. Sorry, it's just... Uh... Alright, so Treasure Hunter, we're going to do Control-C. That's... Oh, wait. Yeah, you know, I actually already copy-pasted, but you can't copy-paste right into the memory card generator because you need to actually... 
do one little important function. This is it right here. This is what it's going to look like after you copy paste it in the Microsoft Word. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do Control A. You're going to want to center justify everything. Oh, the reason why you're center justifying is because you see all these spaces in between each entry. So when you have protect in one cell, there's going to be 12 spaces. Same with shell darkness. You want to get rid of all the spaces. And the way to do that is to center justify everything and then left justify it. Now, as you can see, there's no spaces in between each one. See, there's no spaces whatsoever. That's what you want. So you do control A, control C. You go all the way to control and then just on the designated block, so enmity or whatever, you just do control V and uh, there you go. You do the exact same process. So, you know, this one right here is ability names. That's what you can use control find with job names item names and then this one is skill set names from arms keeper you just do the exact same process i mean i just kind of messed around with the colors you know i changed the cells so that they're gray and that they're in the exact same uh type their aerial intent i just i just made it consistent and actually the shade's a little bit different to be technical now uh you saw it a little bit earlier but I mean, right here you can see all the text for each ability was changed. Swift foot attack boost. This uh, memory card generator registers it. Uh, and that's about it. So I'm going to show you some proof right now that this does work. And uh, yeah, that will be it basically. Just, I, I'm not going to use the player versus player. All I'm going to really do is just load up uh, a memory card, a test memory card. And uh, yeah. Now there might be a little bit of lag here. Not lag, but there might be a little bit of a delay. I don't know why. Like, you know, when I actually talk and confirm or something. So, no big deal, though. Alright, so, giving you confirmation. Everyone had swift foot attack boost. This is parted ways. Yeah, there really isn't much else to this. Um, yeah, without further ado, I guess I'll uh, tell you guys to take care. Yeah, I hope you, uh, these tutorials help you out greatly and... Hopefully you can uh, show some really innovative shit, you know, or if you don't want to, that's fine too. Um, yep, I'll uh, see you guys later. Ciao.